Hi, I'm Steve O'Connor with Midwest Panel Builders, and today we're going to talk about the G3X to GTN Crossfill and some of the shortcomings of the system. We get asked a lot of questions about the crossfill between the G3X and the GTN. So we're going to look at that right now. We're going to show you how it's done and some of the limitations when it comes to that crossfill. All right, so now we'll come to the iPad here. I have a flight plan in here from our home airport to a couple of the airports here in Michigan. And then we're going to come over to normally we would have our active flight plan in the bottom corner here. And you can see it's empty as well as the GTN flight plan is empty. So I'm going to go ahead and click in here and we're going to look at a couple things. Uh, one, we have the source that we're going to select, whether it's external GPS, which would be your GTN, or the internal GPS, which is the G3X. So if I click internal, one thing it's going to ask me is, hey, that your crossfill could modify your flight plan. So you either have to be willing to accept that or not. So I'll hit OK. Um, but we have that in there. Now you could be in any source for what we're about to do. I'm just going to keep it internal because it's there. So I have this flight plan. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this flight plan into the G3X system by sending it to panel. So on the panel now it comes up and it asks me what I want to do. I can store it for later. I can activate it now or simply ignore it. I'm going to go ahead and activate that. So as you see, it pulled my flight plan into the G3X, but it also pulled it into the GTN as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to kind of see what happens as we start to move things around here. So anytime I make a change on the G3X, I need to make sure that I am in internal. Otherwise, I have to have external if I want to use the external to actually navigate. So currently, we're just navigating on what's in our G3X itself, not on the GTN. So let me go ahead and switch that to external, and now I'm navigating on the external. Now, if you look, what I can't do is I can't put any waypoints in, okay? So I would have to do that on the GTN itself. So if I actually want to make changes here, I have to switch back to internal, and then I can make changes. So let's say that I'm going to add one in here. I'm just going to add a waypoint before, and let's say I'm going to travel on down to Detroit Metro. I'll add that in, and as you see, it added it into my flight plan before, but it also added it into the GTN. So what I could do now if I wanted to use the GTN is I could go ahead and switch back to external and now I'm operating on the GTN. So what we can do with this is use this screen to actually do the work that we would do here. Because often people, they'll say, oh, I need a 750 or I need something because it's a bigger screen. We can use this smaller screen because a lot of what we do can actually be done here just by swapping these different pieces here. So using the internal versus external. So now the next question that people often have asked is, why can't I use the Direct2 and have it go to my GTN? So here's the thing. It actually can, but there's a way that it has to be done. So in and of itself, if I just hit Direct2, I'm on my internal source. I hit Direct2 and let's find a, an airport that's um, close to us. I'll do nearest airports. We'll use 77 Gulf and I activate. What happens now is it cleared out my flight plan and all I have is my direct to that 77 Golf. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to switch this now to external. And what happened is it pulled the information back out of the GTN. Because I only have one point, it doesn't want to transfer it over to the GTN. So it pulled my information back in. So that seems to be a problem or so some people think. But really it's not because all I have to do is I can come over to my GTN, I can just hit direct two on there, nearest, let's pick that 77 Golf again, activate, and guess what? Now it shows it on both, okay? So we can do a direct two that'll come back to the G3X, but it just doesn't go the other way around. We don't really see this as a problem because it really doesn't take much effort. We're already using this if we're IFR or whatever, so let's just go ahead and use that direct two button. It's really no different than if I use this. It's not adding any extra work. So it really doesn't matter which one I actually use. So what I will do though, is show you a workaround. All right, so now I'm coming over to the iPad here where in ForeFlight I have the same flight plan we've been working with. It's also in the G3X screen and it's as well, it's in the GTN 650. So let's go back to the scenario of the Direct2 that doesn't work from the G3X to the GTN. So I'm gonna pick on our 77 Golf again. This time I'm doing it in the ForeFlight and I'm gonna hit a Direct2. 
If you notice what happened though, it did put in the 77 Golf, but it also put it in coordinates for the current position of the aircraft. So it has a starting point and an ending point, which is a flight plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna transfer this into our G3X system and we'll see what happens. So I'm gonna activate it and as you see, I have a user waypoint here and I have 77 Golf. It also transferred that over to the GTN. What's happening is, is that the G3X system itself, in order for it to transfer to the GTN, it's gotta have a starting point and it's gotta have an ending point. When we simply do a direct two, we only give the ending point. So therefore it will not transfer in. So again, this isn't really a problem because we can do a lot of that stuff either here on the iPad if we want to with this workaround or we do it directly through uh, the GTN. Now this can be done on four flight like I have here, or we can also do the same exact thing on Garmin Pilot. We hope that this video helps you understand not only the limitations, but the benefits of the cross fill between the G3X and the GTN. If you'd like to see more of these videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell. And don't forget that we have our new online store shop.midwestpanels.com where we offer all the latest in the Garmin avionics and we offer the full support that goes along with it. If you have any questions at all, you can give us a call 810-356-3855 and we'll be looking forward to seeing you next time.